We all marvel at professional athletes for their superhuman ability to run faster and jump higher, but we forget that they're real people too and can't possibly live forever. The passing of these star athletes has left a deep hole in our hearts. Elena Fancini's death on February 8th came at a young age as the Italian alpine skiing star passed away at just 37 years old. The cause of her death was cancer. A successful athlete and a two-time World Cup winner, Fancini also took home the silver medal in the women's downhill skiing event at the FIS Alpine World Ski Championships in 2005. In addition, she was an Olympic athlete who represented her country in the 2006 Olympics in Turin, as well as the 2010 event in Vancouver and the 2014 one in Sochi. The cancer diagnosis cut her attempts to attend the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics short, and while she subsequently attempted to return to the sport, Fancini ultimately retired in 2020. The news of Fancini's death was a blow to her old teammates, some of whom learned the news while preparing for the 2023 World Championships. Fancini's friend and teammate Sofia Goja described the heart-wrenching situation to the Olympics, saying, Yesterday we did the second training run, but inside we were deeply shaken. I focused on my skiing, but once I came back to my hotel, I cried non-stop for three hours. Few athletes get to create a legacy as one of the greatest to ever play their sport. Even fewer have a chance to do so while insisting they're better at a different sport. Yet, such was the case with Dick Grote, who died at age 92 on April 27th. He had a stroke two days after finding out about his induction into the Pittsburgh Pirates Hall of Fame. Adept at both basketball and baseball from a young age, it initially seemed that the former was Grote's true calling. He achieved considerable success during his time with Duke University's basketball team, becoming a two-time All-American. Eventually, however, he started gravitating toward baseball, but only because the Pirates' general manager, Branch Rickey, told him he couldn't focus on both sports simultaneously. So that was the end of my basketball career. While Grote himself always felt that his true talent was in basketball, he ended up choosing baseball. Judging by the two World Series championships, one national MVP award, and numerous other accolades he won throughout his 14-year pro career, it wasn't exactly a bad call. In the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, Tori Bowie competed in three events, the 4x100-meter relay race and the 100-meter and 200-meter sprints. She took home a gold, a silver, and a bronze medal. Unfortunately, Bowie's life was cut short in a particularly sad fashion at just 32. On May 2nd, representatives of the Orange County Sheriff's Office found her dead in her home. Bowie was eight months pregnant at the time of her death, had gone into labor, and passed away due to complications. The news struck a particular nerve with Bowie's Olympic teammate, Allison Felix. In response to the tragedy, she wrote an article in Time calling attention to preeclampsia, a blood pressure complication during pregnancy that played a part in Bowie's death. Felix herself struggled with the condition in 2018, and it's a considerable pregnancy risk for black women. Pro Football Hall of Famer Jim Brown died on May 18th at the age of 87. Brown's wife, Monique, announced the news on Brown's official Instagram account, writing, He passed peacefully last night at our LA home. To the world, he was an activist, actor, and football star. To our family, he was a loving and wonderful husband, father, and grandfather. Our hearts are broken. The statement's list of Brown's accolades is no overkill. Though he was only 30 when he transitioned from football to acting, Brown had already created a legacy as one of the greatest running backs of all time, breaking numerous records during his nine seasons with the Cleveland Browns. Brown went on to become a familiar face in Hollywood, appearing in no less than 58 shows and movies. People don't like it when you stay around too long, so. I took advantage of the times, went into movies. He was also a prominent social activist and advocate for the black community. Despite his accomplishments, Brown's legacy is complicated. Over the decades, he faced multiple domestic abuse charges. However, he was only convicted for a 1999 incident where he smashed his wife's car windows. Brown was sentenced to six months in jail, serving less than four. Nikki McCray Pinson was part of the winning women's basketball teams in two consecutive Summer Olympic Games. However, Olympic golds from Atlanta 1996 and Sydney 2000 were just part of her resume. She went from being a breakout star at the University of Tennessee 
to earning a place in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame after a nine-season career in the WNBA. After ending her playing career in 2006, McCray Penson became a basketball coach. She even won the Conference USA Coach of the Year Award for the 2019-2020 season for coaching Old Dominion's women's basketball team. McCray Penson's life also had its troubles. In 2013, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and in 2021, she left her coaching position at Mississippi State University, citing health reasons. She wrote in a statement, in light of these developments, I have decided to step away from coaching in order to devote my full time and energy to addressing those issues. Although I look forward to returning to coaching when I am able, I believe this is the best decision for me and my family at this time. Unfortunately, McCray Penson never returned as the coach of Mississippi State. She was an assistant coach for Rutgers University before she passed away on July 7th at the age of 51. Surfing is a perilous sport that requires interacting with one of the most powerful natural forces, the sea. Unfortunately, this can sometimes end in tragedy. This happened on July 9th, when professional surfer McCullough Jones died when the fin of his surfboard slashed a large cut in his thigh, slicing open his femoral artery. Fin lacerations are a relatively common injury among surfers since the power of the sea can easily drive a sharp fin through flesh but this one was particularly bad. Jones remained calm and requested assistance. However, while others were able to rescue him from the choppy waters, it soon became clear that the surfer had lost too much blood. Despite attempts to save his life, Jones died at the hospital. A two-time US champion before turning pro, Jones was well known for the thrilling images and videos he shot while surfing, providing an exciting first-person view of the sport for surfing enthusiasts and laypeople alike. He was 44 years old when he died. Track and field star Jim Hines held the distinct honor of being the first athlete to run 100 meters in under 10 seconds. Hines first achieved a hand-timed 9.9 seconds at the U.S. Championships in 1968, and later that year, replicated the feat to the tune of 9.95 seconds at the Summer Olympics. That record wasn't broken until 1983. While Mexico City 1968 was the only time Hines appeared on an Olympic stage, it earned him two gold medals, one from his solo sprint and another for the 4 by 100 meter relay. Hines passed away on June 3rd at age 76. Despite his sprinter accolades, along with two seasons playing in the NFL, Hines didn't live the kind of wealthy life one might associate with today's athletes. In a 1991 interview with the Los Angeles Times, he expressed a belief that his Olympic success was overshadowed by one of the most memorable moments from Summer Olympics history, Tommy Smith and John Carlos's Black Power salute on the podium. Hines said, America thought we knew about it. There were 48 blacks on the team and two knew it was going to happen. Most of us felt the best way a black athlete could make a statement was by going and doing his best. Iconic Chicago Bears linebacker Dick Butkus died at the age of 80 on October 5th. According to a coroner's report, the cause of death was a stroke. Fast, powerful, and dedicated, Butkus was named first-team All-NFL in his rookie season. He would eventually go on to earn numerous individual honors throughout his playing career before earning a coveted spot in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He didn't disappear after his playing career ended in 1973, either. On the contrary, Butkus worked as a prolific sports commentator and actor who appeared in more than 60 TV shows and movies over the years. But despite all the awards Butkus won, he never got a chance to play in the Super Bowl. The Rose Bowl, as it turned out, was the only major postseason game I participated in in my whole football career. Regardless, the Hall of Famer didn't dwell on this particular lost opportunity. After all, he knew perfectly well that football is a team game and the Bears as a whole didn't exactly perform well during his time with the team. When asked about never playing in the Super Bowl, Butkus told the Chicago Sun-Times, You know, I never thought much about it. I mean, to do something like that, you have to have the other 50 guys all in, too. Sir Bobby Charlton was one of the best-regarded soccer players in history, an obvious talent since childhood. He began playing for Manchester United while he was still in school. Charlton scored twice in his debut match in 1956 despite playing with a sprained ankle and went on to spend almost his entire playing career there. This presented him with both incredible highs and unthinkable lows. Charlton's United won every possible prize a club could win, 
However, he was also aboard the plane that crashed and killed eight players, three members of the team staff, and numerous others in one of soccer's most tragic events, the 1958 Munich air disaster. Charlton, who was only 20 at the time, survived with minor injuries, but the weight of the tragedy burdened his shoulders for the rest of his life. On the pitch, Charlton thrived. Apart from his success with Manchester United, he was an instrumental part of the national soccer team that won the FIFA World Cup during the 1966 tournament. After he retired as a player in 1973, he continued to work with the game in several roles, notably as a director for Manchester United. Charlton was 86 when he passed away on October 21st. According to a coroner's report, he had sustained injuries after an accidental fall. World Golf Hall of Famer Betsy Rawls might not have the same name recognition as some of the other athletes on this list, but her accolades stand up to just about anyone, especially since she never intended on becoming a pro golfer. Rawls, who died on October 21st at the age of 95, initially only played for personal amusement while studying physics at the University of Texas. However, success as an amateur and the victory in the 1951 U.S. Women's Open marked the beginning of a legendary career. Rawls went on to win eight majors and 55 LPGA Tours events in total. After she stopped competing in tournaments in 1975, she spent decades working behind the scenes as a tournament director. Former MLB star Willie Hernandez died on November 20th at age 69 after a history of heart issues. The Detroit Tigers announced the death of their former star player with a statement that reminisced on his accomplishments. Part of it read, a 13-year Major League veteran, including his final six seasons wearing the Old English D, Hernandez was a key member of the Tigers' 1984 World Series championship team, earning American League MVP and Cy Young Award honors that season. As the statement readily indicates, Hernandez's 13 MLB years brought him plenty of success. He had already pitched for the Chicago Cubs since 1977, moving to Detroit by way of the Philadelphia Phillies. 1984 was his first season with the Tigers, and suffice it to say, the move was a success. To put the difficulty of finishing up a season with a trifecta of the Cy Young Award, the American League MVP, and a World Series victory in full context, only three players in history have managed it. 